sooner or later you'll be called on to introduce someone at an industry meeting, a client event, or just a community gathering. And you don't want to be that person who confuses the crowd, disappoints the speaker, and embarrasses yourself. In the audience at a recent conference, I watched a painful experience unfold. The introducer made no pretense of being familiar with her comments beforehand. She simply walked to the front of the room, unfolded her sheet of paper, and began to read very slowly in C. Jane Run fashion. The introduction dragged on for so long that the two co-presenters turned red face, then began to avert their eyes, and then duck their heads, and then they began to squirm. Finally, one presenter reached up, took the microphone from the introducer, gave her own name, and began her opening remarks. Sigh of relief from the audience. Ideally, you'll want to deliver a rousing introduction, one that introduces the topic very briefly and tells why the audience should care. And then you want to establish why the speaker is qualified to speak on that topic. And then the introduction should help the audience connect in some way with the speaker. And then of course encourage the audience to give a warm enthusiastic welcome and, and then clearly and correctly state the speaker's name. All too often the crowd hears a rough introduction instead, one that stills the speaker's message, goes on too long, sounds basically insincere. Not infrequently, someone fumbles with a ruinous introduction, one that gives no information at all about the topic, is delivered poorly, usually read and stumbled through as if they're looking at it for the first time. It lasts too long. It either omits altogether or just mangles, butchers, mispronounces the speaker's name. So when you're called on to introduce a speaker, how do you accomplish that rousing introduction that everyone loves? Well, make sure you understand the topic, not just the title. Titles can be tricky and clever, and sometimes they tease, but they don't always tell exactly what the speaker plans to cover. But it's your job to talk with the speaker beforehand to ensure that you do know the general idea and that you can introduce it properly. And then tell the audience why they should care. What key questions will the speaker answer? What are the advantages? of listening, what takeaways will they have for investing the next 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes with that, with that speaker. Just be careful that you don't go on too long on the subject and steal the thunder from that speaker. That's a no-no. And then pave the way for your speaker by giving their credentials. Your audience wants to know that the speaker is qualified to speak on that topic. What are his or her credentials in this area? Now, this is not the place to comment on everything the speaker has ever accomplished, but to establish the speaker's authority on that specific topic. Why has he or she been invited specifically to speak on that, that topic? And then connect the speaker to the audience by tossing in something personal, if appropriate. Why have they gone through a similar, maybe, the, maybe they've gone through a similar restructure of their organization. Are they originally from the same state as the audience? Do you love their sense of humor? You were out to dinner the night before and you had a great time. And then encourage a, a warm response. Uh, depending on the occasion, you might leave the audience in an applause as they join the stage. If it's a teleconference, uh, you might want to, or a virtual meeting, you might want to request a verbal greeting or comments on screen if it's a, a, a webinar, webinar speech. And then state the speaker's name at the very end of your introduction and pronounce it correctly. If the name's difficult, write it out for yourself phonetically or create a rhyme or another memory aid so that you can say it correctly. For example, when introducers ask how to pronounce my name before I do a keynote, I give them this aid. I say, Diana Boer. The H is silent. Boer. It rhymes with doer, as in she's not a talker, she's a doer. Rousing, rough, or ruinous. As with many things, the results depends on the preparation.